Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about damaged packages. Um, if you are a reseller, you send something out to a customer, the package is damaged, now what? We're going to talk about who is responsible, how to handle it, and finally we are going to go through step by step how to fill out an online USPS damage claims form. I'm going to walk you through the process. So when we get back. Well, how about a word from our Portuguese friends? For those of you who are not familiar with this book, English as She Is Spoke was written in 1855 by a couple of Portuguese gentlemen who did not speak a word of English, but that did not stop them from writing this handy little phrase book to help their countrymen navigate the English speaking world. So today's selection is from the very aptly named Idiotisms and Proverbs. Um, keep the curtains, the farce is played. Keep the chestnut of the fire with the cat foot. Friendship of a child is water into a basket. Burn the politeness. Tell me whom thou frequent. I will tell you which you are. After the paunch comes the dance. Drink as a whole. Of the hand to mouth, one lose often the soup, to eat as ogre. It is a basket board, to look for a needle in a hay bundle, to dispute upon the needle top, to live in a small cleanness point. It must to break the stone for to have almond, to make paps for the cats, to fatten the foot, my favorite here, to crunch the marmoset. I actually had to look up crunch. Marmoset is a small monkey. Crunch is an archaic word meaning to chew up. So these people certainly had a very odd idea about what our eating habits consisted of. Okay, damage. Uh, the reason we're going to talk about this is so far this Christmas season has been an unusually active one for damaged goods. I personally have had two damaged shipments in as many weeks. So let's start with who is responsible for the damage. You put the item in the box, you send it out. Whose responsibility is it? You're the reseller. It's your responsibility. It's not your buyer's responsibility at all. So wrap your head around that one. You'll save yourself a lot of worry. Um, given the fact that PayPal, eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, whoever, is going to hold you responsible for the damage, the first thing you need to do is understand that you can't put it off on your customer. So... You have an item, it's shown up damaged. The customer writes to you and says, the item arrived damaged. What is the first thing you do? One, you assure them immediately that you are going to give them a refund. You do it politely. You let them know you are very sorry this happened. Now, hopefully you're gonna do this because you're genuinely sorry this happened. We've all gotten damaged items in the mail. We know how frustrating it is, and we know how frightening it can be until we get that assurance from the seller that they're going to make good on it. So hopefully you're doing this because you're a human being and you've been in that situation. But trust me, even if you are a complete sociopath and you do not care, put a smile on your face and tell them you're going to take care of it because you are. Either you're going to do it willingly or you're going to do it because PayPal, eBay, Etsy, Poshmark, whoever is going to make you do it. And given the fact that you have absolutely no choice in the matter, 
smile about it. You know, it's, it's, it's a done deal. There's no point in turning a situation over which you have no control into an adversarial one with your customer. You need your customer's assistance. You really do. And trust me on this, if you handle your customer properly in a situation like this, they are not going to hold it against you. They are not going to say, this evil seller sent me this poorly packaged. No, no. Because anybody can be a good seller when things are going well. You need to prove to them you're a good seller when things are going poorly. And frankly, that's the difference between a good seller and a bad one. It's easy to be there for your customer when everything's working fine. You need to let them know you're going to be there for them even when things are not working fine. So, first of all, let them know you're sorry. You're going to do this because you're a good person and you really are sorry. You're going to do this because you're a sociopath and you realize it's in your best interest because you need them. Now, your seller may have sent you pictures when they told you the item was damaged. These days, sellers are, are buyers rather are pretty savvy and they know this. So your customer says, I've got a damaged item. Here are the photos. Now, if they have not done that, ask them for the photos. Can you please send me some photos? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry this happened. Can you please send me photos? Remember, tell them you're sorry because we know you really are. All right. And you're going to want pictures of the box as well as the damaged item. The reason for this, and this is the hard one to swallow, is the post office rarely settles insurance claims if there is not conspicuous damage to the outside of the box. Yes, a postal worker can take your box, toss it six feet off the truck, everything in it gets broken, but if there's no damage on the outside of the box, there's a very good chance they will not honor your claim. That's just a fact. So you want pictures of the damaged goods and the picture of the damaged box. And that's important. Now, once you've got this information, this is the point where you need to assure your buyer that you're going to take care of this. You're going to either give them an immediate refund if the items are unsalvageable, but if it's salvageable, you may want them to return the item to you so that, let's say, for example, that the box has uh, um, a set of china and two plates are broken. You may just want to say, you know, return it to me. I will give you your money back and then you have the plates. That's probably, you know, an option in some cases. Um, one of the things I always did with damaged dolls was I requested the doll back. Now, I would send them a prepaid shipping label and they would send me back the doll. And the reason for this is in some cases the dolls can be repaired. In some cases it's, it's not worth it. In dealing with small porcelain items, which is mostly what I'm dealing with on Etsy, Here's your refund. That's the end of it. I don't want the bits and pieces of broken china back. But I need to ask the buyer, in addition to the pictures, to hold the box until I find out if the post office wants to examine it. And they might. Um, a lot of times they don't. If the pictures are good enough, they just say, okay, that's it. If the claim is not too excessive, okay, that's it. Sometimes they actually want to see it. So that's why you need the buyer's cooperation. You not only need the pictures, but the buyer might actually have to take it to the post office. And that's an inconvenience. And they're not going to want to do this if your first reaction is, I don't believe you, or you're going to have to file the claim yourself. I'm washing my hands of this. Do you really think anybody's going to help you after you've said something like that? Would you help somebody who said that to you? Of course not. Remember, the buyer has done nothing wrong. They gave you money and they got damaged goods. 
they are the victim. So, once we've got this, now what? If you sent the item out by uninsured mail, that means either first class uninsured, um, or if you, well, priority carries $50 in insurance automatically. If you have not added additional insurance, let us say you have a set of China, it's worth $200. If you have not added additional insurance, all you're going to get is the $50 if you sent it by a priority. By the way, the post office does not reimburse for shipping. So that's important to keep in mind. And it's a good reason to include shipping in your purchase price. So the next step is you need to file an insurance claim. I have spoken to sellers, experienced sellers. I'm not talking about people just starting out, but I've spoken to experienced sellers who have said to me, will I tell the buyer to file the claim? No. I once had a buyer, uh, just out of the kindness of her heart, she thought she was doing me a favor, began filing a postal claim, and it took me three weeks to unfile that claim so that I could do it properly because she didn't know how. I'm the seller. I know how to do this. You're the seller. I'm going to teach you how to do this so that you're the one with the expertise. Your buyer, well, unless I bought from you, in general, is not going to have the experience you have. And they could make mistakes. The mistakes they make mean you're not getting the money back. Because remember, the buyer gets their money back one way or another. Either you give it to them or eBay, PayPal, Etsy, whatever, will force you to. The buyer will be made whole. When we talk about filing the claim, that's making you as the seller whole again. So, if it's uninsured, nobody's going to do anything about it. It does not matter if the post office set the box on fire. Not going to do anything about it. Sorry. That's fact. I would suggest to everyone, and I do this, I have a, a limit. And my limit is $50. Anything over $50, I insure. Under $50, I figure that's just the cost of doing business. Once in a while, I am going to have to refund someone up to $50. Like I say, cost of doing business, that's my limit, 50 Set your own limit anywhere you want to. Um, good limit is between 30 and 50. And just that's where you're going to take it on the chin. Anything above that, you want to be protected. You want insurance. Insurance in general is only a couple dollars. I would say for most packages, you're looking at three or four dollars at most. Very fragile items should be insured. Items over a certain amount of money, in any case, like I say, minus 50, anything over $100 should be insured. And you really, really need to do this because otherwise you're taking a pretty significant loss. So what do you do next? You need to file a claim with the USPS. So in order to do this, you're going to need an account because we're going to do this online. You need an account with the USPS. You go to their website, usps.com, and the opening screen in the upper right-hand corner, there will be a little button that says register or sign in. If you have an account, sign in. If you don't, register. They are not going to want any more information on you than they already have. They're the post office. They know who you are. They know where you live. They probably know where all your relatives live too. They're the post office for heaven's sake. The advantage to an account is you can do business with them online, which is a lot easier. And you can also order free shipping supplies. And we've talked about this in previous videos. Get that account. They'll send you free boxes. You know, they really do make it worth your while. And if you buy your postage directly from the USPS, 
which I, I do not. I do mine through PayPal whenever I can. But sometimes international packages, I'll go through the USPS. The online prices are significantly less than they are in the post office itself. So, saves you a trip to the post office and saves you money. So, first, you need the account. So just scurry on in, open your account. Next, you are going to need the tracking number of the package that was damaged, all the information on the seller, their name, their address, all that information. You are going to need proof of value, and that is the receipt. That's what you sold the item for. That proves the value. That absolutely proves the value someone gave you $50 for it, well, then it's worth $50. And you are going to need proof of damage. And that's where your buyer comes in, the pictures they give you. So we are going to go through this. By the way, I have pictures of the computer screen. I snap pictures. I'm going to warn you going in, they are not very clear. They are photographs of a computer screen, but hopefully in combination, with the step-by-step -step instructions. You're going to be able to follow this well enough to get it done. So, where are we? Um, the main page. Uh, you are going over to the second tab from the left. It's going to say mail and ship. Second tab over, mail and ship. A pull-down menu will come up. It will have some columns of information. You're going to the second column and you're going to go down to the next to last entry there which says file a claim. You click on file a claim. Uh, that is going to bring you up to a new page and you scroll down almost to the bottom. You're going to have to scroll through. It's going to say domestic claims and, and it gives you information. You can read it. Well, you can read it if you want. You know, but scroll down and then it's going to say start an online claim. Click that button. Then comes up with a new page. This is your claims page. The first thing they're going to want is your tracking number and the ship date. Now the tracking number, as you know, is that that I believe it's like 20 digit number. Um, these days, we all know about tracking numbers. You get them automatically from most of the postal services you use. If you buy your postage at the post office, they will give you a receipt with the tracking number. You hold that. You always hold that for at least six months. The reason I say six months is PayPal will allow a customer to apply for a refund right up to six months. And you need the tracking information to prove that you actually mailed the package out. So you get that thing, you hang on to it. Okay, so that's your tracking number. And then they're going to want to know the date of shipment. And that's the date that the item was mailed out. Um, so you fill all that in, you hit search. And the post office is going to go through its little computer database. And based on the tracking number, and the date of shipment, they are going to identify your, your package online. So we go over to a new page once you hit search. And the first thing they're going to want to know is the reason for your claim. And the reason for your claim in this case is going to be damage. So item was damaged. Um, and then they're going to want to know the amount you paid for insurance. Now, if you bought separate insurance, you put in the amount you paid. And that will be on your shipping receipt. Um, if you're just using the basic priority mail figure of $50, then you just put in zero. And you'll be covered by the $50 minimum that the post office gives you for free on priority mail. Then they want to know if you are the mailer or the addressee. You are the mailer. You're the person who put it in the mail. Then they are going to want you to describe the contents. Um, you will put in a description. And we're going to use the set of China. Set of China. And then they're going to want a detailed description. And you will say, 
six cups, six plates, six saucers, whatever. You want to give them the information they need, which is what was in the box. If many items were in the box, itemize every last one of them, even if it's repetitious, you know, like six cups. You don't have to put cup, 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 cup. Just put six cups, six saucers, etc., so that they know what it is. Then they want proof of value. And the, uh, the proof I used for the claim I submitted and photographed is a PDF file. And you'll see that when we go through the pictures. It's a PDF file. It was, in fact, not the purchase receipt. I copied out the refund receipt from PayPal showing what the buyer paid me and the fact that I gave them their money back already. So proof of value. Um, because not only did they pay me for it, but I paid them. So it's a PDF file. Oh, how you get this? The way I got mine was I scanned uh, the, I, well, I printed out the PayPal receipt and then scanned it, and my scanner turns it into a PDF. If you do not have this, my suggestion is the easiest way to do it is snap a screenshot of your PayPal account and add that as a file. Uh, as I say, I prefer to scan it because I like to have the hard copy just in case, but screenshot of your PayPal receipt, that's your file. You give them that and then they are going to want the pictures of the damage. Remember, they want to see a damaged box. So I always start off by loading the pictures of the damaged box, then the damaged contents. I was very lucky with the claim that I filed, the one I photographed for you, because the buyer, oh, she just inundated me with pictures. I got so many, I had the chance to pick and choose. And she very carefully documented not only the damage to the box, but fragile on the outside in big red letters. That was nice of her. So, there's your proof. The next thing you're going to do is review and submit. So you hit the submit claim, and then you go to a thank you page. It's just that easy. Now, once this is all processed, we wait and see what the post office says. Now, the problem with this is the post office is judge, jury, and executioner. You buy your insurance from them as part of your priority mail price, you know, if, if you're not using extra insurance. They get to decide if the contents were damaged in transit, and of course, if they were, they were the ones to damage it. Very often, the post office will quibble about this. They don't like admitting damage, but this is their system, and we have to go along with it. If they deny your claim, they give you the right to appeal. And if you need to appeal, you just write up what happened. You know, and write up, I provided pictures of the damaged box clearly showing, you know, crushed corner, provided proof of value, provided pictures, you know, state your case again. Um, I have had times when I have argued with the post office for months and prevailed in the end. I have had times when I have argued with the post office for months and in the end they've still said no and I've had to consider whether or not I want to take them into small claims court and sue them. Um, I haven't done that yet. I might one day. But that is the process and it is remarkably easy. So now I'm going to show you a slideshow of the pictures. I have to apologize. These are photographs of a computer screen, so they're not especially clear, but they ought to be clear enough so that you can match them up with the, the, uh, the website of the post office and follow along. Now, of course, you already have my verbal instructions. You're going to get the pictures because I know some of you are visual learners and some of you really need those photos and again 
I'm sorry, the clarity is not good. And I would have loved to have been able to go back and take more pictures. But unfortunately, you can only do this while you're in the middle of filing a claim. And once the claim is filed and processed, sadly, there's no going back and retaking the photos. Oops. But I hope this will provide you with a framework so that you can follow along. So let's take a look at those pictures. As you can see, it's pretty intuitive. They ask you for information, you give them information. Um, again, I must stress, be kind to your buyer. Try to remember, it's not their fault. Sometimes they're going to be upset, they're going to be angry, they're going to be hurt, they're going to be disappointed. Don't take it personally. They're not angry with you. They're angry with the box they just opened full of broken bits of stuff that they were hoping would live on their dining room table. Any one of us would be upset in a situation like that. So always remember, it's not their fault. They're under a lot of stress. Be kind. Be understanding. If they're angry, don't take it personally. And remember, we've all been in this situation. I cannot stress enough that a little kindness will go a long way. Remember, the post office may yet ask them if they will bring the box in so they can look at the damaged goods. If that happens, you need their goodwill. Remember, they got their money back. This is you getting your money back we're talking about. 
and they are under no obligation to help you. So your kindness now is going to go a long way toward ensuring their cooperation in the future if you need it. And I'm, I hate to make it sound so transactional because, like I said, I know most of you are going to do this simply because you're good people. But if there is the occasional sociopath in there, I will appeal to you. Do it because it's in your best interests. Okay, that is filing a postal claim. Remember, you're the seller. It's your responsibility. You're the one with the experience. You need to do this. Okay, I know that's not what some of you wanted to hear, but I hope it will make the inevitable a little easier for you. So have a great day and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.